the start of the Cold War. In this video, we will take a look at the start of the Cold War and Truman's containment policy in Western Europe. From allies to rivals. The United States and the Soviet Union emerged as the two leading world superpowers. Both countries possessed far greater military capacity, economic power, and political influence than other countries. Even though the US and the Soviet Union had been allies during World War II, their differences made them rivals in a Cold War. This period is called the Cold War because both countries never engaged in direct confrontation, perhaps to avoid the devastation that the use of nuclear weapons may have caused. Instead, they held a global competition that led to several world crises and regional confrontation on every continent. Causes of the Cold War The ideological and political differences between the United States and the Soviet Union, as well as their strategic needs, made the two countries rivals. A clash of the two superpowers was practically inevitable. The Soviet Union consisted of present-day Russia and other neighboring countries once belonging to the Russian Empire. It became the world's first communist state after the Russian Revolution of 1917. Russian revolutionary leader Vladimir Lenin consolidated the revolution into a dictatorship of the working class where there was no private property, no room for political opposition, and religious beliefs were generally discouraged. Lenin's successor, Joseph Stalin, proved to be a ruthless dictator who murdered political opponents or sent them to gulags or labor camps in Siberia to maintain absolute power. The United States political and economic system was the complete opposite. The US had a democratically elected government, and the American people enjoyed freedom of speech, press, and religion, along with the safeguards of a fair trial embedded in the Constitution. Private property and free enterprise were the cornerstones of its economic system, and exchanges conveniently happened in the free markets, with little government intervention. As World War II ended, both superpowers wanted to exert their influence in the reconstruction of war-torn countries in Europe, decolonization in Asia and Africa, and the regional affairs of other countries. While the US sought to spread democracy and the free market system, the Soviet Union wanted to spread its system of Soviet communism. This clash of ideologies was never expressed in direct combat, but rather through proxy wars, where each superpower supported a side. The tensions also grew into a fierce competition over nuclear arsenal development, military deployment, propaganda campaigns, espionage, economic embargoes, rivalry in sports, and even scientific and technological rivalries like the space race, the Cold War begins in Europe. As you can recall, the United States and the Soviet Union were drawn into the war and became allies against Nazi Germany. The Soviets, however, resented the US decision to engage in operations in North Africa to delay direct combat with Germany until the troops were ready. In the meantime, the Soviet army faced the main impact of Nazi attacks and endured heavy casualties. While 400,000 Americans died in the war, the loss for the Soviets exceeded 23 million. This was the beginning of the tensions between the two countries. The Yalta Conference In 1945, as the Western Allies were ready to occupy Nazi Germany from the West 
and the Soviet Union was liberating Eastern Europe, Churchill, Stalin, and Roosevelt met in the Soviet resort city of Yalta. At the Yalta Conference, the Big Three laid plans for a post-war Europe and its reconstruction. They agreed to divide Germany into separate occupation zones and confirmed the structure of the United Nations, which had been approved at the Dunbarton Oaks Conference. Stalin promised to allow free elections in Poland once the war ended. The Potsdam Conference In April 1945, Roosevelt died only a few weeks before Germany's surrender. The new president, Harry Truman, met with Stalin just outside Berlin, in Potsdam. The Potsdam Conference took place from mid-July to early August of 1945, and the topics focused on the treatment of Germany, the final campaign against Japan, and the future of Europe. At this conference, Truman made his decision to drop the atomic bomb on Japan. Serious differences arose over the future of Eastern Europe. Stalin believed that Eastern Europe should serve as a buffer between Western Europe and the Soviet Union. Stalin wanted to ensure that the Soviet Union would never again be invaded through Eastern Europe, and that Eastern Europe would serve as a Soviet sphere of influence. Since the Red Army was already occupying Eastern Europe, Stalin saw this as the perfect opportunity to spread communist control in the region. Truman wanted to make Stalin accountable for his promise of free elections in Poland, since he believed that the countries of Eastern Europe wanted democratic governments and free markets. For Truman's advisors, letting communism spread would be against American ideals and interests. Therefore, the U.S. could not go back into isolationism or comply with Stalin's demands. Even though the Soviets had liberated Poland, most Poles did not see the Soviet Union as their friend, painfully remembering Russian rule before World War I. Stalin's cooperation with Hitler to invade Poland, and even the destruction of Warsaw as Soviet troops passively watched. Stalin refused to hold free elections in Poland, and instead placed Polish communists in power. The Iron Curtain Communist governments came to power in all the countries of Eastern Europe. Trade and communications were cut between East and West. In 1946, Winston Churchill described the situation as an Iron Curtain, which had fallen, closing off Eastern Europe from the West. For the next 40 years, Eastern European countries would become satellite states of the Soviet Union, adopting communism and facing severe restrictions on travel and contacts with the West. The fall of the Iron Curtain and the U.S. refusal to share atomic bomb secrets with the Soviets marked the beginning of the Cold War. Truman's Containment Policy Truman and his advisors feared that the Soviet Union was attempting to spread communism throughout the world, and that Eastern Europe had just been the first step. Isolationism was no longer an option for the United States, and Truman decided to stand up against Soviet expansion. Based on the reports from the American ambassador in Moscow, warning of the Soviet intentions to continue expanding unless threatened by force, Truman decided to take a firm stand against the spread of communism. Truman's stance was a policy of containment, Truman did not attempt to overturn communism where it already existed, focusing instead on containing it from spreading to other countries. The Truman Doctrine, 1947 In 1947, Turkey faced strong pressure from the Soviet Union to allow passage through the straits that connect the Black Sea and the Mediterranean. 
Since Britain had ended its military assistance to Turkey after the war, the U.S. immediately stepped in to ensure that the control of the strategic straits remained in Turkish hands. At the same time, in neighboring Greece, communist rebels were threatening to take over the Greek government. Truman feared that if either country, Turkey or Greece, fell to communism, the other one would soon follow. Truman then proposed to extend financial assistance and military advice to both Greece and Turkey to avoid the spread of communism. This was the beginning of the Truman Doctrine. As part of his containment policy, Truman promised American support to any free country or people fighting communism as a world crusade on behalf of embattled democracies. The Marshall Plan, 1948. After the war, Europe's infrastructure was destroyed and its economy completely devastated. Truman feared that under these conditions, Europeans were vulnerable to communism. The US Secretary of State, General George Marshall, proposed giving economic aid to countries in Europe to rebuild their economies. Under the Marshall Plan, $12 billion in assistance was extended to Europe. The Marshall Plan was successful in speeding economic recovery, making countries in Western Europe less vulnerable to communism, as well as strong allies and commercial partners for the US. The Marshall Plan was also offered to the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe, but American economic aid was sharply rejected by Soviet leaders. The Division of Germany In 1948, the French, the British, and the American occupation zones were merged, and a new nation-state was created, the Federal Republic of Germany, commonly known as West Germany. Berlin, the old German capital, was located deep in the Soviet occupation zone and had also been divided into four sectors, occupied by the Soviet Union, Britain, France, and the United States respectively. When the Soviets learned of the new West German state, they reacted by announcing a blockade of West Berlin. All highway and train connections to West Berlin were closed in an attempt to force the Western Allies out of Berlin. The Western Allies refused to leave the city and began a massive airlift to bring food and necessary supplies to the city. The so-called Berlin Airlift was successful and within a year, the Berlin blockade was lifted. The Soviets turned their occupation zone into an independent state, the German Democratic Republic or East Germany. Until German reunification in 1990, there were two Germanys. The formation of NATO and the Warsaw Pact. In 1949, the United States, along with Canada and the nations of Western Europe, formed the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO. Each NATO member made a pledge to defend other members in case of attack. In this way, the US extended its umbrella of nuclear deterrence to the countries of Western Europe. In 1955, West Germany also joined NATO, and the Soviet Union responded by creating a similar alliance, the Warsaw Pact, along with all the satellite countries of Eastern Europe. The Soviet Union ended up using this pact to justify its intervention in Eastern European affairs. In cases such as the anti-communist revolution in Hungary in 1956, or the proclamation of an independent government in Czechoslovakia in 1968, the United States never directly intervened in Eastern Europe since Soviet power was firmly established. The role of the U.S. was limited to accepting refugees from that region and condemning Soviet acts of force in international forums. In the next video, we will take a look at the Cold War 
under Eisenhower and Kennedy, as well as the second Red Scare. Thank you for watching. Please click like and subscribe for more videos.